Hey there, tech fans. Rick here again with another review. And today, I have the Ampace P600 Portable Power Station. This product provides plenty of power to keep all of your portable devices fully charged when you're away from home. The product has 584 watt hours of internal capacity and can provide up to 600 watts of external charging and operating capabilities that can surge to 1200 watts and can even surge to 1800 watts with certain devices. Now there's a lot of things included with the kit that I'd like to talk about, so I thought I'd start with an unboxing first and then I'll do a complete overview of the product, I'll take a closer look at it, and then I'll come back and remind you of a few things that I really like about this portable power station that you can use to compare it to others you may be considering. So let's get started with the unboxing. There's a lot to look at here. So when you first open up the box, you'll find the portable power station and it's a beauty. The one I have here is sort of a silver and a brown finish on the outside of it, which is really like a high-end looking unit. They make it in several other colors as well. So you have a couple of choices there. Now included with the kit, you'll find an AC charging system and a DC charging system for your car. So basically you'll plug this into a wall outlet, the barrel connector plugs into the front of the unit to charge it, same thing in the car. Now one other thing that makes this kind of unique from a lot of other portable power stations on the market is the fact that you can use this as a car jumper system. And this kit that I've got here includes that car jumper system. So this actually plugs into the front of the unit, you'll connect this up to your battery, and you can start your car with it. And they offer this in a couple of different ways. You can buy just the power station on its own and then pick up this adapter for your car later on. The kit I have actually has both of those included. So it's a really nice system to be able to use it as portable power when I'm out in the field or if we have a blackout at the house, but then knowing I can start my car with it as well is an added bonus. Also included with the kit is a full instruction manual that explains everything you could possibly want to know about this product, how to use it, how to charge it, how to take it out in the field and connect it to external devices, and all the specifications of the power it can provide are in here as well. Now the unit itself is kind of unique in a lot of different ways. Let me talk about the basic core technology first. So as I'd mentioned, 584 watt hours of internal capacity, 600 watts of operating capabilities externally that can surge to 1200 watts when needed. That's important because if you're using things like power drills or fans or anything with a motor in it, it's gonna draw a little bit more current when you first turn it on and this unit can handle that extra surge in current. You've got a lot of different ways you can charge it. Like I'd mentioned, the kit includes the AC kit for home, the DC kit for your car. You can also charge this with solar panels, which is a great way to top this off if you're out camping. You can bring a portable solar panel with you, set it up next to your tent, you'll drink in the sunlight, solar panel converts it to electrons, they're sent to the unit and actually fully charge the unit. And I'll talk about that in a minute. So the product itself, once you've started charging the unit, it has to hang on to that charge somehow. So one of the big differences between this one and a lot of other portable power stations on the market is the battery technology inside because battery chemistry has matured a tremendous amount over the last couple of years. These units used to be based on lithium polymer technology, which is an okay rechargeable technology. The challenge with it is it's great for laptops, it's great for cell phones, it's not so great for portable power stations because that chemistry is really susceptible to changes in temperature. So for example, lipo cells or lithium polymer cells, which a lot of other power stations use, don't do really well in hot weather or cold weather. You can't charge them when they're real hot, they don't hang on to the charge as long, and you can't charge and discharge them as many times as some of the newer technology. So so they work okay, but they're not the greatest technology. This uses lithium iron phosphate cells, which is the very latest chemistry in rechargeable batteries. And what that gives you is a much bigger tolerance for temperature changes. So this works really well in cold weather, hot weather. You can charge it whenever you need to charge it. It also hangs on to a charge longer. So you can charge this on a Friday, head out for a camping trip on a Monday, and you're gonna have plenty of charge left in the unit. But its biggest advantage is the fact that you'll get a lot more charge and recharge cycles out of it. So this unit can go several thousand recharge cycles, which means you're gonna have it for more than a decade compared to some of the other units on the market. The other thing that's really important about this product as far as the charging and discharging is that they've built in a really clever battery management system to the product. It actually takes charge of how it's gonna actually move the electrons into the battery, and when you're charging external devices from it, it's also very good in controlling the outbound current to those devices, and I'll get into that in a minute as well. One other feature they've built into this particular product is an MPPT circuit. Now, if you're gonna use a solar panel, the challenge with solar panels is you'll set them up in the sunlight, but as we know, the sun's gonna change its intensity during the day if there are clouds going by, or the sun's gonna move across the sky, so you're gonna get a real variable voltage and current from that solar 
solar panel into the unit. And the challenge there is that if that's not regulated somehow, it can take an awful long time to charge those batteries, plus you're going to waste a lot of that energy. So the MPPT circuit, which is built inside the unit, takes responsibility for managing that inrush current from those solar panels and sort of evening out the charge across those batteries, which is a good thing because it prolongs the life of the batteries, but more importantly, it squeezes every bit of energy out of that solar power that's coming into the unit to quickly and safely charge those internal batteries. So a couple of ways to charge it. You've got strong technology inside the unit with the lithium iron phosphate batteries. And now you're probably wondering, okay, now that I've got a charge and I'm out there on my camping trip, what can I use it to charge external devices? So on the front of the unit, you'll notice there are two full-sized AC outlets right there. Those two you provide a full sine wave output. A lot of these portable power stations use a modified sine wave output, which works okay for certain devices like chargers and things like that. But a pure sine wave output means you can use it with any kind of electronics that's a little bit more sensitive to the frequency, and you're gonna get pure sine wave on both of those. Those outputs can give you 600 watts of charging or operating capabilities that can surge to 1200 watts. So like I'd mentioned before, if you're plugging in a drill or a fan or something that draws a little bit more current, maybe a cooler, this unit can definitely handle that. In addition to that, you'll find DC circuitry right over here. There's a full-sized DC outlet, just like in your car. Anything you plug in your car, you can plug in there and it'll work just fine. That will deliver 12 volts at 10 amps, which is a lot of current for DC. You'll also notice there are two more connections below it. Those are barrel connectors. They're 5521 connectors, which is a really common port. And that port can be changed into two more of these using conversion cables, or you can find connection cables between a 5521 to directly charge a lot of the products you may bring with you out in the field, like laptops, DVD players, game consoles. So those are really versatile as well. Both of those will provide 12 volts at 10 amps. And then finally, there's a collection of USB ports on the front, and those are the ports you're probably gonna use most often because you're using them at home today with USB chargers. And there are fundamentally two different styles of USB ports. USB-A, which is the older style, those are the larger ports that you're used to, and the newer USB-C, which are the smaller ports. On this unit, You've got two full-size USB-A ports that will both deliver 5 volts at 2.4 amps each, which is the maximum current you're going to get out of a USB charger at home. So anything you plug into a charger at your home, you can plug into those two top ports and you can charge it just fine. There's also a third USB-A port, and that's a QC or a quick charge port. And the difference there is that that QC port, when you connect the device up to it that's QC compatible, it'll actually look at that device, determine the charge level of that device currently, and adjust the voltage and current it sends to that device to quickly and safely charge it. So it can bring it up to 50 or 60% in very short amount of time, as long as you've got a QC device. So you've got two standard USB-A ports and a QC USB-A port, which is pretty cool. Then on the top of it, you'll notice there's there's a USB-C port. That USB-C port is also a quick charging style port, but it's a PD style port, which is power delivery. It does the same thing for power delivery products like some Apple, some game consoles, some drone batteries, anything that's PD compatible, you plug into the USB-C port. It'll do the same handshake with that device to determine how much of a charge it needs and adjust the voltage and current it fires that device so it can charge it quickly and safely. And that port will deliver 60 watts of charging power, which means you can plug in really thirsty devices like larger tablets or game consoles or maybe laptops, anything that draws a little bit of extra current, you can charge out of that port. Finally, there's a courtesy light on the top that you can use when you're in your tent, you need a little extra light to look at something. And there's a couple of different settings. When you tap the button over here, it'll actually turn on in the lowest setting, medium setting, high setting. If you tap it again, it goes into flash mode. Tap it again, it goes into SOS mode. And that's really handy because if you happen to have it with you and you break down on the side of the road, you can put it in SOS mode, set this down near your car, and that way oncoming traffic will know that you're off to the side of the road and to avoid you. So the unit's got pretty much everything you'd need. The thing I really like about it most though is that I can use it as a portable power station when I'm out camping. Again, to charge and operate all of my portable devices. I can use it to start my car if I need to because I've got the connection cable. And one final thing I'd mention, if the 600 watts is not enough power for you when you're heading out camping, there's one more port right over here that allows you to connect up an external battery to double the amount of power the product provides. So if you need twice the amount of power, Ampace makes a nice little battery that plugs right into the unit and doubles the amount 
amount of power the product can provide. So they give you everything you need in sort of a flexible form so you can modify it as needed. If you want to jump your car, you're good to go. If you want to charge it at home, you've got a kit. How about charging in your car? No problem. you got a kit there. You want to charge it from a solar panel? Perfectly fine. Just plug it in, set up the solar panel, and charge the unit. So I think they've done a great job of building pretty much everything you need into a modern portable power station that's incredibly portable, incredibly powerful, and incredibly easy to use. So if you stay tuned next, what I'll do is take a closer look at the unit. I'd like to explain the ports and the connections so you understand exactly how to use it. And then I'll come back one more time and just point out a few things that really separate this particular portable power station from a lot of other products on the market so you can find the best value for you if you're in the market for a power station. On the front of the product, right in the center, you'll find a large digital display that provides all the information you'll need to understand about the current status of the power station. For example, right now it's telling me the batteries are at 25% capacity. You'll find three different circuits, the AC, the USB, and the DC circuit. Each of these have their own power button to turn them on. So if I turn on the AC circuit, you'll notice the indicator come on, hear the fan kick in, that means the inverter's active. And the number in the center is the battery management system inside calculating how long I can run the two products that are plugged in here. Now, since there's nothing plugged in, it's telling me I can run 54 hours at a 25% capacity. Now, as I plug things in here, that number will readjust and show me the actual time left on the battery capacity internally for the products that are drawing current out of the unit. Now, I'll turn on the USB. You'll see the USB indicator and the DC. You'll see the DC indicator. It's important you only turn the circuits on that you're using because in the case of the inverter, it's going to draw current even though you're not using these ports because the inverter uses some current just to spin it up. So always turn these off unless you're going to use them. Now the AC circuit will provide 600 watts between these two outlets. It's a pure sine wave output, so that's plenty of power to run things like lights or fans or chargers for your laptop. And these are three prong grounded outlets. Next to that is the USB port section, and you've got a couple of choices here. There are two full-sized USB-A ports that'll each deliver 5 volts at 2.4 amps. On the bottom, you'll find another USB-A that's a full-size USB-A, and that's a QC port, which is a quick charging port like I'd mentioned before, and that will adjust as needed to whatever device you plug in that's QC compatible. On the top, you'll find a USB-C port, and that's used with a lot of the newer modern electronics that use a USB-C connection, and that's also a PD or power delivery port that can deliver 60 watts, and that'll adjust both voltage and current depending on the product you plug in there. So it's nice you have a great variety of USB connections. On the left, you'll find the DC ports, and these are just like the ones in your car. That's a standard outlet port like you'd find in any car or any truck. That's 12 volts at 10 amps. Below that are two 5521 ports right here. Each of those will provide 12 volts at 10 amps as well. Above that is the input connector, and that's used with both the AC kit and the DC kit, or the solar panel kit. You'll simply plug it in there to charge the unit. On the right, there are two flaps you can open up. This one is where you'll plug in the jumper kit. So if you want to start your car, you'll plug that jumper kit in here and connect it to your battery. If you'd like to connect an external battery up to it, Ampace makes an external battery you can double the power by plugging it in right there. Then finally on the top, you'll find the LED light, and you can turn that on by holding this button down for a second. It comes on in the low setting, medium setting, high setting. Hit it one more time, it strobes. Hit it again, it goes into SOS mode. Tap it one more time and it turns off. And you can see that the actual amount of power that's left in the batteries is affected by all those circuits being on. So again, I'll turn off the AC, turn off the USB, and then turn off the DC. And that's pretty much it for the front of the unit. On the side of the unit, you'll find two ventilation holes that are cut into the cabinet. Behind those are cooling fans. As this product starts to operate, if it gets warm inside, those fans will turn on automatically and pull air across the electronics to keep them at a comfortable temperature. On the top of the unit is a really nice wide handle that makes it easy to transport it from your car to the camping site or back to your car when you're done with the camping for the weekend. On the bottom of the unit, you'll find rubber feet in each of the four corners, which help to keep it stable when you set it down on a slippery surface. They also protect the surface from scratching. And finally, they'll absorb a little bit of the shock if you set it down too hard. They won't transfer that to the electronics inside. The product also includes a jumper starter kit, which allows you to use the P600 to jumpstart your car if needed. You'll plug this end into the P600. There's a port on the front labeled jumper starter. Lift the rubber flap and plug this right into that port. And it's keyed so you can't put it in backwards. And you'll find two indicators on here, reverse and correct. You'll connect this end up to your battery, black to negative, red to positive. If you've made that connection correctly, 
the correct light will come on. If you flip these by mistake, the reverse light will come on. Make sure you flip them back to get them correct so the correct light comes on before you try and start your car. You'll also see a boost button right here. If your battery is really run down, you can tap that boost button once you've made the connections to add a little extra current to that charge so you can get that car started. There's also instructions on the bottom of this unit that walk you through step by step on how to use this product. I hope that closer look was helpful. Now here are a few things that I really like about the M-Pace P600 that you can use to compare it to other portable power stations you may be considering. Your first decision has to do with the capacity of any portable power station that you're thinking of buying because there's a lot of big portable power stations on the market that can be 1,000, 2,000 watt hours. But the challenge is if you're gonna use it for camping trips or long road trips, it's gonna to be too big. You're gonna be dragging this big portable power station out there and setting it up next to your tent. And you're gonna find after a couple of days when you come home, you're gonna have 80 or 90% of that capacity still in that unit, which means it's way too big and you've dragged this gigantic portable power station out there in your camp camping site. 600 watts is the perfect combination of power and portability to give you all the power you need for a couple of days of camping, or again, a nice long road trip, or even to have at home as a backup power supply. If you lose power, you can run a few small appliances on it, charge all your portable devices, and be perfectly fine, and still not have this gigantic, heavy, expensive portable power station. The next consideration is the battery technology inside of the power station because that determines in large part how long you can use the unit, certainly how many times you can charge and discharge the unit. A lot of the portable power stations on the market, like I'd mentioned, use lithium polymer technology, which is an older battery technology. This uses lithium iron phosphate batteries, which is one of the latest battery chemistries on the market, and that provides additional charge and discharge cycles, a better tolerance for temperature changes, because you're going to use it in the outdoors, but more importantly, it'll hold on to the charge longer as well. So if you charge it on a Tuesday, you can head out on a camping trip Friday and still have 100% of the charge on the batteries. Another big consideration is the amount of output that you can draw from the unit, and more importantly, the number of ports and style of ports. This product provides AC, DC, and USB. Like I'd mentioned before, you've got two AC outlets. Both of those provide 600 watts. It's a pure sine wave for the AC. That's another consideration. A lot of other portable power stations use a modified sine wave, but 600 watts is a good output for AC. On the DC side, you've got a single DC outlet, just like in your car, 12 volts at 10 amps, and two 5521s as well, that'll deliver 12 volts at 10 amps as well. So you've got plenty of DC output. And as far as the USB output goes, you've got three full-size USB-A ports, and a single USB-C port. One of those USB-A ports will deliver a QC charge. The other two can deliver 5 volts at 2.4 amps. The USB-C port on the front is a PD port, which is another quick charging port that can deliver 60 watts of output. In addition to that, you've got a courtesy light on the top and a really nice digital display in the front that gives you all the information you could ever need about the portable power station so you know how long you can use it, what kind of charge is left on it, and all the other details about the using the product out there in the field. The nice thing about it too that you won't find in a lot of other portable power stations is the ability to use it as a car jumper. Now a lot of other portable power stations will do a great job of, of charging and operating all of your portable devices, but this one, especially if you have the adapter, you can plug this in the front and you can use the stored energy to start your car because if you're out camping, you may have left the light on in the car, you're out there in the tent for a couple of days, you come back to the car at the end of the camping trip, put your keys in the ignition and a car won't start. Well, you've got the portable power station and the jumper cables with you, that allows you to start your car. And the last thing I'll mention is that MPs thought about the amount of power inside the unit, and they built this additional port right here that allows you to double that power if you need it to put a second battery attached to it through a specialized cable. So if you're going camping, maybe this is perfect to take on the camping trip. But if you wanna use it as a home backup, maybe you've got a second battery at home that you leave at home, and when you're home, you plug it in, you charge it up, and now you've got double the amount of power because you've got that external battery. So a lot of flexibility built into this unit, and I think it's just a wonderful product. So that's pretty much all I had for today. I like it an awful lot. I've been using it for a couple of weeks, comparing it to other portable power stations, and I find that I'm taking this one with me more often than I am some of the others because of that balance of power and portability. It's just the perfect mix. So hopefully you found this review helpful. I've enjoyed talking about it. Thanks again for watching. And until next time, as always, <laughs> stay nerdy.